Hi there, Mrs McTaggart here. Right, in this video, I am going to do the whole of simultaneous equations in one go. So it's quite a long video. If you just want to work on the kind of story ones, um, you can zoom through to halfway through. But I'm going to just start from the very beginning and do very simple examples right through. So simultaneous equations. It's equations that happen simultaneously, so at the same time. So whenever you are solving simultaneous equations, here is an example of two of them. Whenever you're solving them, you're finding a value of x and y that work in both equations. So it's a pair of numbers that when I plug it into the first equation, I get the answer of 11. When I plug it into the second equation, I get the answer of minus 2. So to solve any of them, there are different ways. Now, I, the way I'm doing it might be different from the way your teacher does it. But our main aim, we cannot proceed and use the elimination method, as it's called, unless we have these two things matching. So up in my yellow bubble here, I've said you have to have two letters of the same value, one positive and one negative. Now I've already got that. So in this one, I don't have to actually do any preparation at all. Now, some teachers will tell you to get the X's, the first terms the same, but I've got to the stage, I just have the exact same method and my pupils always just like use the middle two because it's a consistent approach to these questions. And for some of you, consistency is key. So this one is already good to go. Now what happens is, if we get those two terms in the middle, one a plus and minus, if we cheat, oops, a daisy, if we then cheat this as a big add sum, then these things will be eliminated. So if I start from left to right, I know this goes against your normal order of adding sums, but left to right, if I add 2x plus x, so if I add these two together, that gives me 3x. If I do y minus y, then the y's have disappeared i.e. they've been eliminated and then I do 11 add minus 2 well that's just 11 take away 2 which is 9 so I've now got this new equation saying 3x equals 9 well we all know 3 times 3 is 9 so 9 divided by 3 is 3 so x is a number 3 I've got my first value then what we do is we sub that into one of the two equations now I always use the one that doesn't have negatives in it because it just complicates things so I'm going to sub this back into the top equation so I'm going to have 2 times 3 plus y equals 11. Now 2 times 3 is 6. So 6 plus y equals 11. Um, so I'm doing 11 take away 6, which is 5. So I think my answer is x equals 3, y equals 5. And I'm a big stickler for writing a little conclusion at the side. Now I'm not done, right? This is something I teach every year and I try and drum it into pupils and you ignore me, right? Simultaneous equations is a question in the exam that you should be able to go and do and check if you've got it right and be like, yes, I've got six marks. How do you check it? Well, we substituted into the first equation. When we did this bit, we used the top equation. I'm going to do a quick check with the bottom equation with my numbers. So I thought x was three, so I'm going to replace x with three y was 5, so I'm going to do 3 take away 5. 3 take away 5 is negative 2, which matches what I had. So hooray, I know I've got it right because my answer matched what was in the other equation that I didn't use. Now, you don't have to physically do this writing anywhere, but it's really handy to do, even if you're just doing it on your calculator or at the end of the exam. And if it didn't work, then something has gone wrong. Go back to the beginning and check all your steps. It's so easy to be filled and think, oh, it divides nicely, I've got it right. Let's make them harder now. Let's give you ones where the middle terms are not the same. So our aim, remember, is to get the middle two of the same value, one a plus, one a minus. So I've got a 6b and I've got a b. So my obvious thing to do is to turn this bottom one into a 6. So I'm going to times it by 6. But you might also notice I don't have a minus here. And the easiest way to turn something into a negative is to times by a negative. So what actually happens is I times this whole equation through by negative 6. Because even if you if you times the equation all by the same number, it's still the same. So let me prove it to you. So if I had the equation of x plus 1 equals 3, right? We all know the answer there is 2, don't we? If I double everything, well, 2x plus 2 is 6. There's me doubled everything. Is it the same equation? Let's check. So we'll do 2x is 6 take away 2, which is 4, and x equals 2. So it's still given as the same value in here for x, x is 2. So just to prove to you that by multiplying everything by the same thing, you're not actually changing 
the answer, you're just making an equivalent equation with bigger numbers. So we leave the first equation alone. So I rewrite the first equation. So I've got 4a plus 6b equals 18. Second equation, I have to multiply everything by negative 6. Now be careful here, it's really easy to mess up. So that gives us negative 18a, negative 6b, and negative... Oh, I need to cheat here. 6 times 17 is 102. So some of these are calculated ones, some aren't. Um, it will always tell you, obviously, in a test if you're allowed one or not. Now, at that point, I underline it and I treat it like a big old add sum. And I've just changed my pen colour. So a big old add sum. So 4 add minus 18. Well, that's just 4 take away 18. So you've got minus 14a. The plus and minus 6b cancel out. And then you've got 18 take away 102, which is negative 84. Right, that double negative is going to cancel out. So you're just going to have a equals, and you do 84 divided by 14, which is 6. Now, if that was non-calculated and you were struggling, remember you could always write it as a fraction, 84 over 14. Oh, well, I know that's 42 over 7. Oh, that's 6, right? So you could always do that if you didn't have a calculator for it. And it divides nicely, so everything's looking good. So now I know what um, A is, I'm going to substitute that into my equation. Now, both of these have got positives in it. One's definitely easier than the other. Which one do you think it is? That bottom one, isn't it? The bottom one is going to save us having to do a wee times by 6 as well. So I'm going to use the bottom equation this time, just to show you it's not always the top one. So if A is 6, I have got 3 times 6 plus B equals 17. Now, 3 times 6 is 18. 18 plus b is 17. I'll then do 17 take away 18, so negative 1. So I think my final answer is a is 6, b equals negative 1. And then again, I'll do my lift check. Now, I didn't use the top equation, so I'm going to use that one this time. So I'm going to do 4a plus 6b. So that will be um, 4 times 6 plus 6 times minus 1. Well, that's 24 take away 6. 24 take away 6 is 18, which is what was in the top equation, so I know I've got it right. So remember, the check doesn't need to be done. I'm just trying to drum it into you that it's a good wee thing to do. Okay, let's have a look at this one. So we have now the scenario where we have to change two of our equations. So this number in the middle, I've got a minus 3 and a plus 2. So I've got the plus and the minus, okay. But I need to think, what can I turn 3 and 2 into? So it comes back to your knowledge of lowest common uh, multiples. Lowest common multiples of 3 and 2 is turn them both into a 6. So I'm going to times the top equation all through by 2 and the bottom equation all through by 3. So top equation will give me 8p minus 6q equals 30. Second equation will give me 15p plus 6q equals 39. And then we're going to add them together as a big add sum. 8 add 15 is 23p. My 6 q's will disappear. And 30 add 39 is 69. Right, 69 divided by 23. Hopefully you recognise that's exactly 3. So p is 3. So now I know what p is, I'm going to go plug it back in. I'm going to use the bottom equation. I, well, I should always... I, know, I say I use the bottom equation to avoid the negatives. Let me use it into the top one and show you why I don't like using the negatives. So you'll end up with 4 times 3 minus 3q equals 15. So you've got 12 minus 3q equals 15. So we're going to do 15 take away 12, which is 3. This is a mistake I see all the time. People write that and then go, oh, Q is 1. But that's not right, is it? What have I done wrong? Why don't I like the one with the negative in it? Well, here's what I've done wrong. I ignored this bit here. That net was a negative 3Q. So my working should have really been negative 3Q equals 3. And Q is actually minus 1. Now, if I didn't then go do my check... I probably wouldn't have spotted that because everything looked good, everything divided nicely. So that is a pure reason why I avoid subbing into this one here. 
the one up the top because that has got a negative in front of my letter. Sometimes it's unavoidable, but if it isn't, use the other one. Let's quickly do my wee check though, because I always do it. So we're going to plug into the 5p one. So you're going to have 5 times 3, 2 times q, so 2 times minus 1. Well, that's 15, take away 2, which is 13, which is what I had in the second equation. So it's right. Now, if I had done that with a number one, I would have ended up with 15 plus 2 is 17, which didn't match. And I would have gone back and said, right, what have I done wrong? And hopefully spot that I hadn't done that negative. But it's unbelievable how many people we see doing that in the marking. Right. Okay, so this brings us on to the real deal. So probably the exam ones, okay? The ones where it's worth six marks. So you're given some scenarios and asked to make up equations i've shortened the question a wee bit because normally it will say form an equation after the first sentence form an equation after the second sentence and it should be pretty obvious that it's a simultaneous equation one because it's asking you to make two equations but i've taken all that right out the first one we've got two adults and three children cost 35 pounds i haven't said what for they're probably going to some kind of theme park or a cinema or something like that so you have to abbreviate that sentence now Two adults plus three children. Most people would just go, right, two adults plus three children cost 35. There's your first equation for one mark. Second equation, this time we've got three adults and five children. And they cost £55. So for, without doing anything else, I've got two out of six. Or maybe two out of five. Sometimes they change what the marks are worth. So there's your starting point. Now, we need to get the middle terms both into 15s because that's the lowest common multiple of 3 and 5. So I'm going to times the top one by 5 and the bottom one by negative 3 because remember, I need a plus and a minus there. And for some reason, I just like always doing the bottom one. So top one times everything there by 5 turns it into 10a, 15c, and 5 times 35 is 175. Times and everything by negative 3 gives us negative 9a, negative 15c, and negative 165. Then we add these together. 10a take away 9a is 1a. The c's disappear. And then this gives us 10. So a is 10. So an adult costs 10. Let's go plug that back into the first equation. So 2 times 10 plus 3c is 35. Well, 2 times 10 is 20, plus 3c is 35. Take away your 20, 3c is 15. 3 into 15 goes 5 times. Now, this is the important bit for your final mark. Do not mess up and leave it like that. We have to answer in words. The question was given to you in words, so you answer in words. So for your conclusion for the final mark, the most pernickety mark in maths is to write adult equals £10 and child equals £5. Now, units are really important here as well. There are years where if you don't put in the pound signs, you will lose marks. If you had an, an answer of £6.50 and you may be left as may even something like that without the zero in the end, you will lose a mark. So money, pound signs two decimal places. If it was talking about weights, like kilograms, put your kilograms on the end. If it's talking about lengths, put your centimetres on the end. Now, of course, I always like to do my check. So, quick check. Three adults, well, three times 10 is 30, plus five times five is 25. 30 plus 25 is 55, which is what was in the second equation. So I know I've got my answer right. Six marks. Now, that's your dream scenario, right? And that's usually what they ask. But just in case, I like to always show one of these ones. It's a wee bit sneaky, okay? So we have a snooker tournament consisting of 20 games. Tom gets paid £5 for each game he wins and £2 for each game he loses. He has paid a total of £79. How many games did he win and lose, okay? So this one's a bit trickier because it's not as straightforward to get the equations. Now, altogether, there are 20 games. We're going to use W and L for losies. So what happens is he wins some games, he loses some games, but altogether, he plays 20 games. So there's your first equation. Then we're going to take all the money bits in and we're going to write, okay, say, 
Okay, he gets five pounds for a win. He gets two pounds for a loss. And altogether, he got £79. Now, what I see on this one is people write this. And they go, right, 5W plus 2L is 20. 5W plus 2L is 79. And then you can't proceed because that's impossible. If you subtract them, you end up with 0 equals 79, uh, 59. So it doesn't really work, right? So that isn't um, going to be right straight away. So one of the equations has all the money bits in it, i.e. my second one, and one of them just talks about the total number of games. Now, all I have to do in this one is times that top one by negative 2. So I've got negative 2w, negative 2l equals negative 40. Bottom equation stays as is. Add these together. 5 take away 2 is 3w. 79 take away 40 is 39. 3 into 13 goes lovely. It gives us 13. So he wins 13 games. Now, at that point, I think it's pretty safe to say, well, if he wins 13, he loses 7. So then I would say that he wins 13 games, loses 7 games. So I've answered in words. My units, technically, is the word games here. All right. And a quick check, 5 wins plus 2 losses. So 5 times 13 is 65, plus 14 gives me 79. Bob's your uncle, I've got the right answer. Okay, this last one is a not-so-obvious simultaneous equation question. Anytime you see the word point of intersection, it's another clue for simultaneous equations because a coordinate always has a value of x and y. So we're trying to find an x and a y that work for both of these again. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write them out. Um, and that'll be 3x minus y equals 13. Okay, we need to double the bottom one times all three by two. So this will give us, leave the top one alone. Um, that'll give us 6x minus 2y equals... Uh, 26. Add these up. 7x equals 21. So x is 3. I'm going to use the top equation because there's no negatives in it. So x is just 3. So I've got 3 plus 2y equals negative 5. So 2y equals minus 5 minus 3 is minus 8. Divide that by 2, I get minus 4. So my point of intersection now, this is a bit you forget. It must be written as a coordinate, whereas the wordy ones have to be written in words. Point of intersection must be written as a point, as a coordinate. Now, I'm going to do a quick check to see that they worked. Um, so, 3 times, if I put it back into the second equation, so 3 times 3, take away negative 4. Well, that's just 9 plus 4, which is 13. So, I know I've got the right answer. So a bit of a whirlwind tour of simultaneous equations. I hope this has helped. Um, it might be a good division exercise to let you see all the different types. The one thing I didn't mention is when you're doing simultaneous equations and you get answers that maybe aren't dividing nicely. Now, by not dividing nicely, I mean you go to a calculator and you've got this big long recurring decimal. Stop. Start again. You should never, ever have to round within simultaneous equations. And also, if you're working out the number of people, right, so the number of adults and number of children, and you get a decimal, you can't have a bit of a person. If you're working out the number of donuts or burgers, you can't have a bit of a burger. So read the scenario of the question. Sometimes decimals are not acceptable. You certainly should never, ever round. And if you get something like that that doesn't divide or you have to round, go back and start again. You have messed up somewhere. All right. So thanks for watching. Bye bye.